I mean, obviously, one way of avoiding um, becoming involved in a controversy is through the advanced pricing agreement procedure, the APA process. Have you got any key points that you would bring up with clients if they're considering entering into the, the APA? Yeah, I, I uh, totally believe in APAs. I got my start in transfer pricing at the U.S. Advanced Pricing Agreement Program when they called it that. Uh, and then uh, uh, I think it's very effective, but it's not for every issue. Uh, and it's not for every taxpayer. So let me, there are a few things you need to, the basics you need to understand for, for deciding to commit to an APA. One, they're not free. Uh, the, uh, they, the math has to work out that the cost of pursuing and the outcome achieved under an APA over the long term has to be better than the cost of regular documentation, the cost and the probability of going through exam and or all the controversy <clears throat> and the outcome under, under that regular approach. So if you, if you can't do the math and come out that you're better for, you know, for an APA, then don't do it. The other big factors are everybody's looking for certainty. Companies like to plan uh, and transfer pricing can be a real obstacle to that planning. Uh, done properly, it's not an issue. So APAs frequently will be company like to resolve their biggest issue so that they can get on with business. And what the, the other kind of company specific issue is the C-suite reaction to the exposure. How high is their risk aversion? Very, some companies seem to embrace risk, others not so much. So that is also a big factor. There are, there, this is costly, it is distracting, but only for a period of time. The possibility is that transfer pricing without an APA can also be very distracting and never ending. So that, that usually is how, how the discussion goes when you're talking to a, to a client about an APA. Yeah, no, no, that, that sounds very familiar.